Father, thank you for this morning. Touch these lips of clay. Grant my hearers the graces that they will comprehend your word, deepen our level of holiness, even in Jesus' name. Amen. Remain standing. Today is Family Life Day. What I'm preaching may not be directly related to family life, but it's applicable. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 12, the, the, the week with the with powerful teachings on family, if you didn't come, I'm sorry. And those of you that didn't come, you missed a lot. And I want to remind you that um, you don't do yourself good. Because the kind of thing that were taught, even me, it shook me. My marriage is better. There are things you don't know at all. You can't hear it anywhere except in the place that God planted you. So I want to urge you, please and please again, take such programs seriously. Amen. Of course, some of you had very good reasons why you were not here. So go online and listen to it. Reverend Mr. Jane Mensah was awesome. Was awesome. She said some deep and powerful things that will make your family life better. Amen. Thank God for technology. Amen. First Samuel chapter 12. Now Samuel said to all Israel, Indeed, I've heeded your voice in all that you said to me, and I've made you and I've made a king over you. And now he is the king walking before you, and I'm old and gray-headed. And look, my sons are with you. I've walked before you from my childhood to this day. Here am I, or here I am, sorry, witness against me before the Lord and before his anointed. Whose ox have I taken, or whose donkey have I taken, or whom have I cheated? Whom have I oppressed, or from whose hand have I received any bribe with which to blind my eyes? I'll restore it to you. This is a holy man speaking. These are the marks of righteousness. And they said, watch this, you have not cheated us or oppressed us, nor have you taken anything from any man's hand. This is a whole nation testifying of the holiness of one man. Then it means that Samuel was holy indeed. That nobody in the whole of Israel could bring any accusation of sin or corruption against him. The Bible says that the righteous is as bold as a lion. What he did was risky. To stand before a whole nation and said, Who can point any accusing finger at me? Some of us. Just the office. There will be trouble. The family. There will be too much against you. But this is a man who stood before a whole nation. And nobody. From his childhood. He said, I've been here from my childhood. No one may this be your testimony. This is the place I want to come to in my life. This is the essence and the marks of holy living. Okay, verse 5. Then he said to them, the Lord is witness against you and is anointed is witness this day that you have not found anything in my hand. And they answered, he is witness. Verse 6. Then the Samuel said to the people, It is the Lord who raised up Moses and Aaron, and who brought your fathers up from the land of Egypt. Now therefore stand still, that I may reason with you before the Lord concerning all the righteous acts of the Lord, which he did to you and your fathers. Please be seated.
How to live a blameless life. How to live a blameless life. How to live a blameless life. The realms of blameless living. The reasons why the believer must be blameless, must or live a blameless life. The roadmap to follow to live a blameless life. The rewards you will earn for living a blameless life. And then the road you will experience for failing to live a blameless life. Samuel was the leader of Israel. Actually, Israel was a theocratic state, not a democratic state. What that meant was that God himself was their king. He was their president. God was their leader. So God appointed a prophet and God led them through the prophet. It got to a time, remember that God raised Israel as a modern nation. But then it got to a time that the Israelites wanted to be like the other nations. Instead of being a model nation the other nations had kings they were ruled by men not by god so you know israel had a penchant for that every now and then we want to when we're in egypt when this was that always comparing themselves to others they were not content with the blessing that God had bestowed upon them. So they put pressure on Samuel because his sons were corrupt, unfortunately. And in those days, the prophet ruled with his sons. So Samuel was peeved and went to God and God said, Grant their request. Appoint a king for them. The mistake Israel made was that they should have gone to complain to Samuel and say, Samuel, see what your sons are doing. What is the way forward? They were not supposed to prescribe or tell God what God must do. Many of us are guilty of this. We go to God with issues and even in prayer, we tell God how God should answer or deal with our issues. Remember, God is a God of principles. He has said, ask and you shall receive. If you go to God insisting on your way, he will grant it. But that is called the permissive or acceptable will of God. Romans 12, 1 and 2. The same applies in Numbers 12 when Aaron and um, Miriam accused uh, Moses of marrying an Ethiopian woman. They should have ended it there. If they had issues with Moses marrying uh, an Ethiopian woman, or they should have said, Moses, we don't understand. This is not a practice, or we think that you should not marry this woman. Can you explain? They went beyond that, and Miriam even said, are you the only person God speaks to? They had crossed the red line. In your bid to criticize, be careful, especially the things of God in the house of God. Be careful you don't cross the red line. Sometimes we get so emotional, we allow anger to fill our hearts. And in our bid to criticize constructively, we end up crossing the red line. So God, God got angry with Miriam and leprosy came upon Miriam. So Israel erred by demanding for a king. The same even happens in democratic I mean, countries. We may not like a president instead of going to God and praying for direction during election. Then we use our own human permutations and you know and we do our own calculations 
based on our own preferences. And as for God, he will never impose his choice on you. And that's why watch all over the world, the world goes in circles. We've never allowed God to choose our leaders to lead us. Somebody wants to marry and I mean, we'll not even pray. We have our own ideal of where an ideal husband or wife is. Before we bring the marriage here, we're already married. So who, who are you deceiving? You are married already and you bring it here and come and pretend that it's a holy matrimony. When everything lies bare before God, you will reap the consequences. You will. And when we begin to reap the consequences, then we tend to blame God. Never blame God for anything you go through. Never. God is a holy God. He does not make mistakes. Whatever you are going through, accept responsibility. You are the cause. I'm the cause. Especially when people are going through challenges. And hey God, why this? Why do you allow me to do this? If you be true to yourself, you will admit that you made that decision that has brought that untold hardship on you. Not God. Not God. So Israel demanded for a king and God said, grant it to them. Then God cautioned them, this king will be a bad king. Let me be blunt. He said he will oppress you, he will cheat you, and yet they said they wanted it. But let me, let me um, rewind, let me come back. Now Samuel is exiting. And he's rendering accounts. He's, I mean, he's, um, what is the term we use? He's um, giving account of his tea worship. Yeah, something like that. And that is what I want to consider today um, about the holiness of Samuel. Samuel was a blameless man. In every area of his life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The realms of blameless living. Number one. Samuel led a transparent life. Go to First Samuel chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Transparent life. I've heeded your voice in all that you said, and I've made a king over you. And now here is the king walking before you, and I'm old and gray-headed. And look, my sons are with you. I've walked before you from my childhood to this day. Here are my witness against me before the Lord and before his anointed. He had rubbed God in. To prove that what he was saying was true, he said, witness against me before the Lord and before the king whom you chose over you. Transparent. So whose ox have I taken? Whose donkey have I stolen? Did I use my power as a leader to oppress the people? No. Or from whose hand have I received a bribe? transparent there was no difference between his private life and his public life what Samuel was in public that was what he was in private there was no duplicity of character in him what you saw him look like on Monday he was the same on Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday and Sunday there are some Christians, you are not what we see in church. Neither are you what we see in the office. At church, you look holy, pious, righteous, but once you step out of this place, your other character, your real character 
You look like a loving husband, a submissive wife, but your husband or wife knows that is not what you are. In the eyes of your children, you look like a responsible, but your wife has to fight before you pay the children's school fees. Transparent. He said, look at me. Anything I've acquired, I didn't acquire through dubious or corrupt means. I stand before you. Judge me. Search me. Throw your media such light on me. I will, I will come out clean. May this be your testimony one day. Transparent. Transparency is a component of holiness and blameless living. You cannot claim to be holy when your life is shrouded in secrecy. You are going out with a lady and we are not too sure. You know, you guys, sometimes we see you at some places and we are not too sure. And you too, you are defending. And so, I mean, people don't see you well, as we say in Ghana. Whether you are here or there, we don't see whether you are straightforward. Whether you are indeed spirit filled. Sometimes you talk like a spiritual person. Sometimes you sound very carnal. Sometimes we see you here keep bringing tight. Then after four or five months, then you come and show up here once a while. You look like, but you are not. You pretend to be, but you are not. Samuel, transparent, led an open life. So, the whole of Israel knew who Samuel was. Do your friends really know who you are? No. It's because Obahaba, you are cold and hot. Transparency. All these terms that uh, institutions and uh, politicians use, they are all biblical and I mean components of holiness. So transparency, corruption free, they are all components. They borrowed it from the Bible. It's not only for politicians. We rather should exemplify those things. He led a transparent life. How come your wife doesn't know the password to your phone? What is it that you're hiding from your wife? My wife has the password to my email, my everything. Why are you sometimes receiving phones in the, in the kitchen? Or the other day you even hit your head against the wall. Because in your bid to escape your wife hearing a conversation... Why, why, is you, why are some names coded on your phone? If we should inspect phones now, even me, the name you have given to me, I have to, I have to. <laughs> so that your wife feels that every name is coded. You say, so Pastor Wengam, that angel, when your wife demanded, so you know, I don't want people to know people who my friends are, so I just use that, you know, Oh, wow. But because of a certain lady in your life. Nothing is hidden from God. Character is like pregnancy. You can never hide it for long. The first scripture my father taught me. It says, when your cup is full, your sin will find you out. It's a matter of time. The fruits will expose you. Don't try it. Every sin will be exposed. Samuel led a transparent, open life. His life was like a book that anybody could see through. No hidden agenda. These days, when people say they, they want to help you, be very careful. Even in church, when they are giving money, they have an agenda. Now, agenda everywhere. Everything we are doing, there is a hidden, personal, selfish agenda. If it will benefit me, I will do it. Even fasting, we have an agenda while we are doing it. We are not doing it 
to become a holy Christian, but because you want something from God. Once you get it, forget about fasting, forget about church. You join the protocol or auction department or media because you have nothing to do or because uh, uh, you want something from God. And once you got it, you left the choir. Once you got it, that's not holiness. Samuel was a blameless man, a man who led a transparent, open life. There was nothing hidden. Number two, he was corruption free. He hated corruption. He did not double in corruption. Let's go to verse number three. Hear my witness against me before the Lord and before his anointed. Whose ox have I taken? It means it is wrong to steal. He's talking about stealing. Taking what does not belong to you is stealing. It's stealing. Stealing is still stealing. Stealing is still sin. When you steal, you are a thief. And no thief will go to heaven. Taking what does not belong to you because you are a manager, because you are a supervisor, because you are a pastor. Don't take what does not belong to you. Recently, I don't want to mention the exact thing. We want to share something somewhere and I was shocked. Somebody couldn't find his or hers. The kind of people were gathered there. I was shocked. I have not recovered from the shock up till now. The kind of people who were gathered there, they are custodians of morality. And yet, somebody couldn't find her own. We have no conscience now because we've sinned now. Conscience is seared. Even when the Holy Ghost pricks your conscience, you don't feel anything and you can come to church and raise your hands and come and fast who are you deceiving you can insult your wife even beat your wife or maltreat your wife and come to church and feel normal you are a joke you are a clown god is a serious god it's a matter of time karma will catch up with you Karma, what you sow, you will reap. Somebody, whose ox have I taken? Why are you taking somebody something? Does it belong to you? Why? Whose donkey have I taken? Or whom have I cheated? Why are you cheating on your wife? Or your husband? Not only go to sleep with a woman, I'm talking about flirting with another woman. Flirting is not like sex. The things you are doing, the kind of messages you are exchanging with the opposite sex. You are cheating on your spouse emotionally. And your wife has complained, I don't like it. He said, I do, I'm the man. You can't force me. There's nothing between us. Meanwhile, you know there's something. Or something is, 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 is starting. Cheating is sin. Whether money cheating or what? Marital cheating, whatever. Or cheating your company. Today, Christians inflate figures, inflate budgets. You can't say, we'll oh, bring seed. Look, your seed doesn't sanctify your corruption. Bringing a seed does not sanctify your act of corruption. Corruption is still corruption once it is a bribe, once it's stolen money. You can bring big money for my appreciation service. After me, I don't know. I'll collect it, I will chop it. It is my right to collect it. It's my appreciation day. Unless I know that one, I will say no. But even Paul said, Don't go to time. Ask how did this, how the uh, the meat was a building that collapsed on the cousier or did the car knock the cousier it's not my duty to go and be asking how the cousier was killed 
or Jenna then a year, no can a bono. Dia, dia ne buboniti. No, ye. Yes! He said, from, from whose hand have I taken a bribe? Bribe is still sin. Bribe! A Christian, before you give a job, you are demanding kickback or contract. A Christian! A Christian in Cedar Mountain Chapel, pastored by Reverend Stephen Yenusom Wengam, taking bribe. Oh, no, times are tough. You know, pastor, you know, the children's school fees. No explanation can justify all acts of sin and corruption. Bible said, even if somebody steals because he's hungry, he must repay seven times. Even the hungry person who steals, Solomon says, when you are caught, you have to pay times seven. No mercy for the cripple when it comes to sin and holiness. And look at a righteous man. He said, even if I did it, I will restore it. Even if I'm in a relationship. I'm prepared to stop it. Some, some you can call a couple and settle a matter and the man or woman knows they are guilty. They will never admit it. They will argue and argue. As for your bro, waste your time Me, what the person knows. But look at a holy man. He said, probably even if it happened at the blind side of me, I am prepared to make amends. I'm prepared to make amends. That is a holy man and a holy woman. Who makes room for benefit of doubt? Don't always sound as if, as for me, I have never. It's pride. You may say, well, as much as I know, I didn't say it. But if I said it, because sometimes we are human, we forget. You can't keep all the records. He said, even if I did, I'm ready and prepared to apologize, to repent, to repent it. That is a holy man or a holy woman. Your wife says, you hurt me. When? 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 Defend it. Tell me. And, you know, she, she, so you know how sometimes you, you can't really prove the thing. A holy person says, you know what? Well, in as much as I don't remember, but I'm sorry. It's possible I did it. We're going to say, Pam, no. We'll try something soon. Oh, buddy, Yamini, woo. Wonkona Osa Jeji Obaze Nyame Niwo Wonkona Osa Jeji Wonkona Osa Jeji Wonkona Osa Nasi Yame ni wo wo kona osa ye wo kona osa ye wo kona ni katalo bosi pa ni katalo bosi bosi yame ni wo wo Yame, ni wo wo kona, 
o sai the third pillar of blameless living is being blameless <laughs> look at verse number five i don't know how to ex ex explain it better maybe give me a synonym for blamelessness probably that may do but watch this then he said to them the lord is with us against you and his anointed is with us this day that you have not found anything in my hand holiness means being blameless that your wife can say my husband has never insulted me or if he did he apologized oh yes even when i discovered that i hold tight for three months i am prepared i'm writing a check or i'll make remedies but not persisting even though you know it is wrong you keep procrastinating oh tomorrow i'll do it again oh next time and you keep repeating it and repeating it the whole nation may god give us politicians like this ceos like this managers pastors like this if a whole nation can clear you sometimes the so-called institutions ah, they are appointed by the government so when they clear you is that clearance when you pay master <laughs> you're investigating your pay master go to america when they say fbi and any fbi you know even presidents fear them not in africa when a president appoints what and what i don't want to be specific and declare you you're happy that you have been cleared and we can all see that this clearance yeah it's something like clearance the people are the best judges when the citizens clear you then you are cleared because we know you we see you it's not you saying that you are holy for jesus it was a demon who said you are the holy one of god a demon man said this on the cross this is a holy one don't arrogate yourself i'm holy let those around you let those you serve let those you lead say that you are holy that you have found nothing in my hand they answered the whole nation testified of the holiness righteousness uprightness and blamelessness of samuel that is in the old testament how much more under the new covenant when grace is available yet today someone is more righteous than the new testament saint who has been washed with the blood full of the holy ghost we are struggling the old covenant was not perfect that is why god removed it and it under the old covenant men like this when times were tough they did not use their position to manipulate to steal to cheat to oppress then Samuel was very, very holy. He was accountable. Verses 3 and 4. Holiness means accountability. He said, You committed so much resources to me. But watch this. I have not taken any money from the state coffers or from the company's coffers. He said, Whose ox have I taken? Have I taken anything that does not belong to me? No. Be content with your salary. Be content with what is yours. It is the blessing of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. Stolen money, money, bribe all those things and you watch recently one politician told me said pastor i have seen co 
colleagues who stole money and later their life so as so where is the money <laughs> you think i'm messing with our taxes people's tight pastor people's tight some of you you sacrifice your meal to pay tight then we take the money and spend it on ourselves the way we want you think it shall be well with you pastor Let's fear God small. Accountable. When I was growing up, we were taught when you are giving money to go and transact business, you bring change. This generation, they don't know change. Even in church, I'm giving people money. They are saying, oh, no, I'm fat. But you don't know you have exposed the flaws in your character. Reverend Eastu said he employed a driver. He wanted to test him. He left money in his car for three days. The guy touched part of the money. Yeah? Leaders, we test you. Some of you have weighed you. So I place people at different grace. There are people, there are some here. I trust them. I don't mind leaving my everything with them. Some too. Hey. I love you, but I don't trust you. So be very careful. The fact that the person did not comment doesn't mean that owning. Today, when you ask for a receipt, then people are angry, even in church. Hey, Pastor, don't you trust me? I know uh, somebody who resigned from a church committee because the pastor asked for a receipt. Pastor, so you don't, you don't trust me. What do you mean? Even me, I don't trust myself. Even me, I'm human. No, why should we be asking for receipt before you produce receipt? If you're a holy person and you are giving money, many of you, your troubles are not altered so. You expose your own character flaw. That's why nobody ever say my office. They don't trust me, and they bypass me because your boss has seen you are not trustworthy. You are not. How accountable are you? Somebody said, "Can you help my daughter with a job?" And you are making advances already. Small girl, help her with a job. Samuel was accountable. Whatever was committed to him, he was able to give account, and nobody could accuse him of fraud. Consistent in holy living, look at verses one and two. Holiness is not a one time virtue now Samuel said to all Israel indeed I've heeded to your voice I've made you a king now verse 2 and now he's the king walking before you I'm old and gray headed and look my sons are with you I've walked before you from my childhood to this day holiness is consistency in righteous living not that you are holy and then you backslide next week you are holy and next time you are something like holy from my childhood he didn't say judge me only when I'm your officer from my childhood y young people can I advise you I didn't know I become general superintendent today if I did some horrible things it could have hindered me from becoming general superintendent you don't know the plans God has for you tomorrow be careful. Many of you, God destined you to be great people, but your greed, your indiscipline, your impure sexual desires has blocked you. I, I don't even know what next after being generous with them, so I'm careful. Even if there's nothing next, I'll be careful. 
So be careful how you carry yourself about. Some of you ladies who you think you just dress anyhow, walk anyhow, huh, I pity you. You are destroying your future. People have placed you in a certain box. Even though you are not like that. Nobody knows what tomorrow holds for you. So be careful how you carry yourself. When we give you a small position, Bible says that if you are faithful and little, much shall be committed to you. If I was unfaithful as local pastor, God would not promote me to become generous with the to oversee millions of cities at the headquarters and do tons of projects. God is not reckless, so God would test your heart and weigh you. Samuel is my mentor. Some of you, you made the treasure of a choir. You can't account for the money up to now. A choir! Ocean department. It's more they gave you 50 cities to keep. You have squandered the 50. Anytime they raise it, no, we food. Then you don't come for rehearsals for three months. Some of them are your prophet. What's about you? Be? Uh, me, 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 my prophetic is, is like as if I'm joking. But that's word of knowledge. <laughs> he was free and fair to all. Verse 3. He was free from nepotism, tribalism. He was fair to all. Racism is not holiness. When you look down upon other people because they don't belong to your class, your tribe, your family, or your political party. Don't relate to people because they belong to a political party. Look, all of us are washed with the blood of Jesus. Oh, and we are free to belong to any party. So why do you as a Christian perceive another person, another political party as if they are not holy? They are not righteous. And you demean them and use derogatory terms to refer to them. Someone wasn't like that. Even when he showed an aid and God set them aside, he didn't, he didn't fight God. He appointed Saul. He didn't behave like some African leaders who are going to still appoint one of his sons still by force to lead Israel. No. He appointed a neutral person. The people, the people that they wanted Saul, he appointed him. I hate tribalism. I will keep saying it. I'm the only child of my parents. I don't have no sibling. And people who have helped me are those who are not from my tribe. People who have done crazy things for me. Maybe I doubt if, if my own siblings were alive, they could even do that for me. So I hate tribalism. My wife is anywhere. No, I'm not saying if you marry another tribe from your tribe, me you are not. But that's me. I hate it. Because you don't know who God can use to save your life tomorrow. All tribes have their strength and weaknesses. I was teasing yesterday. I was in Kumbungu, the North, preaching at our graduation. And I said, look, God is a good God. Oh. He has made sure every tribe has a default. Some tribe, they cannot mention each. Some two are Hori spilt. <laughs> Some two, where I come from, they cannot mention is it th. Thank you. They say thank you. We thank you. My father said he joined one northern church in Ashama in the sixties. He said it took three years before he realized that the song they were singing was We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Three years before he, <laughs> he discovered that the word was thank. They say, we thank you. That's my people for you. So God, he is a fair God. He measure every tribe. Your, what, is your, what is your own? <laughs> Everything is correct. <laughs> I'll go and investigate. 
you know the at Ligon, there was this roommate guy who is a gun. You know the guns can no, no mention each. How many guns are here? Let me see. Hey, hey, raise your hand. So the guy prepared his weekend stew and was going home. No soup. And said, roommate, please eat the stew for me. Eh? I'll be back. So, oh, no problem. No problem. As soon as the guy went, he went for Fantikin came, ordered for Yam. And he ate. <laughs> so when room came, room opened the fridge and the soup worker said, Room, what is the soup? Ah, you said I should eat it. Ah, no, I said you should eat it. He said, No, I ate it. He said, No, H H. So he said he should heat the stew for him with fire. And because guys cannot mess each, the guy chop the soap. I can say Mrs. Doku here. <laughs> so God is good, though. He's giving every tribe. You know, there's uh, my in-laws. You know my in-laws? One a white guy came to church one day so happy God had done something for him he wanted to testify you know that thing say pastor pastor said pastor said again what is it he did somebody to interpret so and I say is a memorial. Hey, you can't be angry. I'm your in-law. <laughs> I, I don't be Hello. Let me end here. Let me end with this because of time. Now, the part of this message that really touches me. Is the reasons why Samuel was holy. Number one, owing to the fact that the Lord had done many things for him. Look at verse 24. Even though he did not state it explicitly, he was now advising Israel, only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider what great things he has done. It means someone was holy because he remembered. So holiness is your thank you to God for all the great things he has done for you. Holiness is your way of saying thank you. So anytime you are living in sin, you are being ungrateful to God. Look at what someone said. Number two, the reason why Samuel was a holy man and a man of integrity, he said, owing to the fact that material things are vanity, verse 21, and do not turn aside, for then you will go after empty things. So Samuel said, the reason why I didn't collect bribe, because money is vanity. You collect all the money when you are in power. What and what? Look at Gabon. You know, the General Superintendent for Gabon is the president of Africa Alliance and we met and he was telling me that it was nasty. The money they found in their former president's room can feed the nation for months and years. But look at today. All the money has been seized. Say, make noise, make noise, make noise, make noise. Make noise. <laughs> Who should make noise? Let the choppers make noise. Make noise. With the army, no. Me a comedy, me mingo edi di. You enfa yefu, muka ni se enfa yefu ne. You don't blow trumpet with an empty stomach. Uyefu ye, uyefu ye, jema na go edi di. Empty stomach don't make noise. So you see, he's saying that when you cheat and steal, money is vanity. It's Empty houses are empty things. You will die and leave it. And even the house you are buying in Italy gone. By the time your children are adult, they will say they don't like this design. 
they'll go and rent and buy another house. So all the money you stole and bought houses, one at Ablikuma, one at Airport Hills, one at Eastleigh Gone, vanity. The third reason why Samuel was holy because God had been gracious to them in the past. Verse 20 to 24. You see, if you remember God's goodness, you cannot but be holy. Oh. Then someone said to the people, do not fear, you have done all the wicked, this wickedness, yet do not turn aside. He said, even though you've done all these wicked things, God was gracious. He did not punish you according to your sins. So why should you persist in sin? One good turn deserves the other. If God has been kind, didn't kill me for my sins, why should I repay him with living in sin? Verse 14 and verse 24. He feared God. Look at verse 14. Pastor, I want to be holy. Fear God. Serve faithfully. Verse 24. Look at verse 24. Serve. He said, only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your hearts. You want to be holy? Be sincere. Serve God with sincerity. Don't pretend. Verse 19 and 23. Watch this. Prayer contributes to holiness. And all the people said to someone, pray for your servants to the Lord your God that we may not die. Look at verse 23. This is the scripture that makes my prayer life tick. Anytime I don't feel like praying as a pastor or leader and I feel tired, when I remember the scripture, it drives me out of bed to pray for you. No more of us for me, for be it from me that I should sin against the Lord in season to pray for you. When I don't pray for you, I'm sinning. It means prayerlessness is sin. If you don't know, I'm telling you today. When you don't pray the whole day, you have sinned. Are you shocked? Yes. When you don't pray, it is sin. I didn't say it. You want to be holy? Be prayerful. Because in prayer, you receive the power and the grace. Verse 25, shun sin. But if you still do wickedly, you shall be swept away. So shun, don't continue in your sins. There are three rewards God gave Samuel. Leadership success, 14 and 15. Listen, holiness brings success. Look at verse 16 to verse 21. He, God manifested his power in the life of Samuel. Watch the scripture. Now therefore stand and see this great thing which the Lord will do before your eyes. When you are holy, God does great things. Watch it. Is today not the wheat harvest? I will call to the Lord and he will send thunder and rain. That you may perceive and see that your wickedness is great. Which you have done in the sight of the Lord in asking a king for yourselves. Verse 18. So someone called to the Lord and the Lord sent thunder. Watch this. The holy man prayed a string prayer and God answered it. It means when you are holy, God does miraculous things in your life. He said, let the Lord send thunder. And the Lord said, Thunder, when you are holy, God gives you a blank check. You can demand anything from God. Holiness grants unequaled access to God's miracles and blessings. Verse 24b, great achievements. Look at verse 24b. It says, for consider great things that the Lord has done. He was referring to Israel, referring to his life. You cannot be holy and God will do mediocre things in your life. Look at verse 25. Finally, look at verse 25. When you are not holy, but if you still do wickedly, you shall be swept away the rod. Unholy living will sweep you away. Sin will sweep you away. 
if you steal after this sermon, after today, after hearing me today, all the things I've said, if you steal, you'll be swept away. How? I don't know. When? I don't know. If? I don't know. That's why I fear sin. There are many times I also want to chop bad. I dream B enters my head because I'm human. You can't stop birds from flying over your head. Of course, you can stop them from building a nest on your head. But when I remember this, if I don't repent and I persist, I'll be swept away. May you not be swept away. It's a terrible thing to be swept away. 